Hello, we are going to speak about the transplantarial approach to pioneer region tumors. Um, so well, why do we do a supertentorial approach? Why do we choose the ventral position? Well, the, the supertentorial transplantarial approach is a direct route. When you look at this image, you realize that it is a shorter access than going uh, along, uh, along the inferior aspect of the tentorium, because this way you have a shortcut. It's a, a little bit of trigonometry to understand that. Um, it allows uh, a respect of the vermian veins. And here you see on this uh, uh, 3D uh, image from Subota that the uh, uh, tentorial uh, splitting allows good access to the tentorial notch and the structures around it. Um, and here on this uh, um, anatomic preparation by Rotten, you see how you can gain a very wide access by uh, splitting the, the tentorium and, um, and uh, retracting the occipital lobe. So why eventual position? Because the installation is much simpler. There is a lower risk of uh, air embolism and a low risk of uh, tearing the bridging veins, as you can see in this uh, image from Roton. And also when the, the patient is reclining prone, and then the brain uh, retracts itself almost uh, spontaneously uh, with almost no need for uh, a retractor. And also, this is much more comfortable for the surgeon uh, to operate on a, a prone patient rather than uh, by extending his arm uh, to op uh, operate in the sitting position. So how do we position the chime? We use a standard table on which we put a vacuum mattress to mold the, the shape of the chime. We, use, we put some gelatin to avoid uh, compression by uh, ridges of the, of the mattress. We use a hot air uh, heating mattress and we put the, the chime in the ventral position with the head straight. Here on the image, the head is a little bit uh, elevated. And uh, this gives you uh, a good uh, access to both the upper part and the lower part of the tumor. Um, the head is fixed in a pin headrest with no flexion. And if the child is under two years, we use a frontal support. How do we do the incision? We do no shavings, there's no need. We just have to comb the hair. Uh, we use an arcuate incision, starting from the inion going up along the midline and then curving above the lambdoid and coming down again, literally, uh, to pass medial to the asterion. We do uh, hemostasis to have the scalp, we cover the skin edges with a providon impregnated uh, gauze and a rain eclipse. Then we do the bone dissection, which should, should be subparastial to avoid creating uh, multiple um, dissection planes. We use the Ovexer uh, spatulas, we are, which are very efficient to, uh, to elevate the bone and, uh, from the muscle, uh, because in the lower part, we are uh, dealing with the occipital muscle. It's important to do the section bottom up. We do a mastasis with wax, and we uh, expose the midline and the lateral sinus. Then we start for the craniotomy. We use two bare holes, or maybe just one, like in this case. Um, the midline is over the edge of this uh, sagittal sinus, and the lateral one is uh, faces the uh, lombard suture, allowing uh, to, to uh, elevate the dura uh, above and below the, the, the hole. We elevate the dura using uh, sometimes a jiggy saw guide, and uh, the bone flap uh, exposes the sinuses and the tocula. We have to be aware that there are some uh, sometimes very sick bone ridges over the sagittal sinus, and the bone can be very sick, and uh, the short craniotome can be um, can be in default. And um, when we expose the tocula, we may have to deal with an emissary vein, which is just pinched and coagulated very easily. Then we open we open the dura. Uh, we use an oblique T-shaped uh, incision. Here the patient is prone, so the lower 
the upper part of the picture corresponds to the lower part of the, the patient's anatomy. Uh, the T-shaped incision allows uh, minimal brain herniation because uh, sometimes the, the brain is still tense, uh, even though we have uh, treated the hydrocephalus before operating. Uh, and it gives access to the midline. It allows uh, also to, um, to elevate the uh, occipital pole to expose the, the tentorium. We have to be uh, very careful of the, uh, the veins when we open the, the dura, the bridging vein in the midline, sometimes along the lateral sinus. And also, there may be some arachnoid granulation at the anteriormost part of the uh, craniotomy. If the brain is tense, we have to access the, um, the tentorial notch by uh, elevating the occipital pole or uh, uh, retracting the, the, from the midline to aspirate CSF. And once we have uh, aspirated CSF, the brain is less and less tense and in the end is completely slack. So then we have to uh, expose the tentorium and incise the tentorium very close to the midline, not on the midline, of course, but close enough to gain a view to the cisterns. We use the bipolar coagulation to perforate the dura uh, and to make hemostasis. Uh, then we use the micro scissors to extend the opening uh, down to the, uh, to the rim of the tentorial notch. So the incision is parallel to the straight sinus. It comes from posterior to go anteriorly until we reach the system. But to be careful that the, there, are, there is very often a dural sinus uh, coming uh, at right angle from the uh, straight sinus. It may need to be uh, packed with surgery cell for hemostasis, sometimes suture, but in most cases, it's, it's uh, generally easy to uh, make hemostasis. And once we have opened the dura, we retract the, um, the, the lips of the incision by uh, a, a, a suture. This allows us to expose the cistern. Here you can see some arachnoiditis. And now we start the cisternal dissection. Very often we have uh, dense arachnoiditis in, in which we have to uh, expose uh, the veins of the deep vein um, crossroads. We use, uh, we prefer to use the sharp dissection to uh, progressively expose the vein of Galen, the basal vein, the precentral vein. Uh, and at that time, we start to, to seeing the tumor in the pineal region. So we have to see if the tumor is, starts from the pineal gland or from the tectal plate. Um, and sometimes we have to expose the trochlear nerve uh, laterally. And we, uh, then we have to uh, dissect the tumor from the surrounding place, uh, the surrounding structures. So um, it is very helpful to sacrifice the presental vein. Uh, in fact, the section of the presental vein is key to uh, access the, the cisternal dissection to expose the internal cerebral veins. And once, uh, so, so you have to do circumferential dissection of the uh, presential vein, apply a pair of hemoclips, uh, and, uh, and um, cut the uh, presental vein between the two hemoclips, and be careful to, to leave a stump uh, of the uh, presental vein in case the hemoclip will slip. And uh, we, we also um, do coagulation to retract this stump. Uh, then, after you have uh, retracted the uh, presental vein, you can expose the tumor. We can be um, a tectal plate tumor in AB in the upper images, and or a pineal gland tumor like in the lower uh, images. Then you dissect the tumor limits because you have uh, more space in, once we have uh, cut the presental vein. You expose the right side of the tumor by dissecting it from the basal vein down to the vermis. Then you expose the inferior aspect of the tumor by dissecting away from the vermis, which gives you access to the tectal plate. Then you can expose the left side of the tumor, which can be helped by, by debulking if you need. But it's, pre it's preferable to uh, do as much dissection as you can before uh, entering the tumor itself. 
And on the left side, it gives you access to the left basal vein uh, and the tectal plate. And then you can access the superface of the tumor, which you can dissect free from the presental vein and uh, enter the third ventricle. And uh, at the time, you, uh, the tumor is uh, already well identified, the limits of the tumor are, are well identified. You can uh, start the anterior dissection of, of the tumor from the internal uh, cerebral veins, from the third ventricle, the thalamus, the uh, interthalamic commissure. So if the tumor goes lower, you can identify the aqueduct, which can be enlarged by the um, hydrocephalus. Um, if the tumor is, is from the tectal plate, you can identify the upper um, uh, twigs of the trochlear nerve. Then you, can, you have to resect the tumor. Most frequently, you can fragment it by aspiration, by CUSA. Uh, this allows you to debulk the tumor and expose the contralateral aspect. Uh, you, can, you have to dissect it from the rim of the third ventricle. This is, this is from where come most of the vascularization of the tumor. So you have to coagulate and, um, and section all the pedicles uh, which come from the brainstem to the tumor. Uh, and uh, it's preferable to end by dissecting what is left of the tumor from the internal cerebral vein, to which it can be very adherent, especially in case of a teratoma, uh, especially if it is a tumor residue after chemo. Uh, rarely, the tumor is small and uh, tough, and you may have uh, achieved a monoblock resection like here. And in the end, you have removed the tumor, you have liberated the third ventricle, you can exp explore the third ventricle. Here on this picture, you see uh, from below the, the, the ceiling of the third ventricle. With the inter here, the interthalamic commissure was split by the tumor, but you can see the anterior commissure, the, the pillars of the fornix, the foramina of Monroe, the telacoroidea the thalami to which the tumor could be uh, adherent initially, uh, but you cannot uh, vision the tumor because it is not in the line of vision from this approach. This is an example of a growing teratoma. The tumor was uh, revealed by hydrocephalus. There, uh, there were some tumor markers which were negative, negative than the chemo. However, the tumor grew, so it was a uh, uh, teratoma uh, uh, remnant which was growing and uh, had to be resected. And this is uh, how we did. Uh, the tentorium was split. Here we see the tumor appearing in the, um, in the pineal system. We have the basal vein, the corpus callosum. Uh, and in the end, you have this image we have seen already with the uh, exposition of the ceiling of the third ventricle and the postoperative imaging showing um, the extent of resections uh, through this uh, um, rather deep uh, approach. This is another example. This is a mesencephalic tumor. Uh, here we cut the tantal edge. We expose the straight sinus and the vein of Galen. Then once we have split the, the dura, we expose the vermis, we see the arachnoiditis. Uh, and by dissecting the uh, tumor from the, the tip of the vermis, you expose the mesencephalic tumor, which can be then uh, dissected and uh, fragmented and resected. And in the end, you have the tumor bed and you, you uh, access the ventricle through the tumor. So the, what are the limits and the advantages of, the, uh, of operating through the infratentorial approach in the sitting position? The drawbacks is that um, when you, you rarely have a very good access to the tele, telacoridea, it depends on the, the anatomy of the veins. Um, and also that it is a unilateral approach. So if the tumor is more posterior, you have a less good access than by the infratentorial uh, approach, or you can extend the anterior split. The advantages is that you respect the vermian vent um, compared with infratentorial approach. You have a larger opening. By the infratentorial approach, you are operating uh, at, the, at the end of a funnel, and you have shorter access. Uh, then what are the drawbacks compared with the sitting position? Uh, the proponents of the uh, sitting position 
uh, says that you have less uh, you have less problems of bleeding in the sitting position. However, uh, we we don't think it's a, an, an argument uh, uh, good enough. You can do hemostasis very easily now with Aviten. Uh, maybe the brain is more tense in the ventral position, but this again can be very easily uh, corrected by accessing the system to aspirate CSF. And the advantages are you have a low risk of air embolism. The installation is, uh, is simple. You don't have a risk of a tearing of the um, corticodural vein. The surgeon's comfort is incomparable. And you have a self-retracting self brain after CSF substructure. So I thank you for your attention. If you, can, if you want more information, you can find uh, in French uh, language in the uh, website Arnaud and you can also access it, access other videos in line on our YouTube um, channel. Thank you for your attention.